We are not owners of this land, but custodians, and have a responsibility to tend and nurture it for future generations, as well as make our living. Orchards are a wonderful habitat and have a unique part to play in maintaining the richness of our natural world. Happily, there is a symbiotic relationship between good husbandry and promoting biodiversity. We are Michael and Chrissy Bentley and we came to Castle Fruit Farm in 2002. We have been very ably supported by Clive Mail, our manager, who has amassed a wealth of experience and knowledge over his 37 years here. We have now been joined by son Richie, wife Claire and sons Oscar and Rudy and now new daughter Maddie, who bring a great new energy to the farm. The rest of the team is mechanic Nick, John, our long-standing semi-retired tractor driver, Artur, our senior tractor driver, Conrad, our field foreman, Radek, Slavi and Arek. These hard-working young men from Poland have been with us for some years. They are adept at all sorts of practical work and are not daunted by long hours when needed or working outside in all weathers. Small family farms like ours are under threat as the economies of scale favours much larger operations but we hope that there will continue to be a place for orchards like ours in the rural economy. This is our year. The harvest is over. We are looking forward to the next wave of our natural gleaners the thrushes, red wings and field fares will swoop noisily in chack chacking and they will clear every last bit of fruit from the trees and the ground, hopefully clearing away some bugs too. There's great joy in hearing their chacking calls on a cold frosty morning, knowing we are providing an essential feast for these long distance travellers. They have been coming here long before we came and hopefully will continue to thrive if we maintain orchards as part of our landscape. Birds of course make use of available food resources. Thrushes in particular take advantage of fruit when their preferred invertebrates are not available due to frozen ground. When the ground is frozen, mist nets are set before first light between the rows of trees to sample the birds that are present in the orchards. Mervyn Greening, an accredited ringer, drops a device into the nets to play the call of a male Lithuanian redwing and it certainly attracts the crowds of migrant redwings, field fares and thrushes. A quick weigh and examination follows and the birds fly off unharmed but ringed. People often ask, winter work? Surely there is nothing to do now it's winter. How that makes our farm manager Clive laugh. One of the foremost things on our minds is tree planting. Our orchards are being continually renewed, driven by age, unprofitability and the never-ending desire of consumers for the new. It is a necessary and huge commitment in every way, not just financial. Other tasks at this time of the year include pruning, machinery maintenance, coppicing, logging, ditching, hedge cutting, networking and planning labour for the next season. So here we are in late February, waiting for good planting conditions. This is vital as we try to minimise damage to the soil, one of our most precious assets, and maximise speedy establishment of the bare-rooted trees. These are waiting quietly in the cold store. 5,000 jars arrived from France mid-January, with a price tag illustrating our weak pound post-Brexit. They need regular attention as their roots must not dry out, nor must they freeze. This is an interesting little challenge, which we have solved by standing them in bins with regularly dampened straw. What else is on our shopping list? Bamboo canes from China, rubber ties, irrigation piping, tree guards from Hungary to prevent rabbits which can kill a tree just by eating the apparently irresistible bark all the way round. Wooden stakes from Belgium, wires, clips. This is a modern intensive hedge style of planting where we are providing the tree with its need for support so that it can put all its energy into fruit production. This increases yield, crucial in the tough battle to make our UK fruit competitively priced.
Buds are breaking on the Valor plum trees and hurrah, the blackthorn is in full blossom so the pollinators can get to work. These are our free workers, so we try to make sure pollen is available early on by planting goat willow and keeping some of the hedges uncut for their early blossom. Now we must organise our 2017 harvest workers. Like all farmers, we rely on seasonal labour to harvest our crops. In our case, this means a group of Bulgarians who come every year for three to five months. Interestingly, no first world country harvests its own produce. The magic of pollination has happened. We have a myriad of insects to thank. It is essential to kickstart cell division. Poor pollination leads to poor fruit set and yield and misshaped fruits. There are many insects that pollinate and to encourage large populations we need to provide sources of pollen and nectar right through from March until September. We must also provide habitat for all these pollinators, nesting places and winter hideaways. All our non-tree acres must be managed for these very important workers. We leave hedgerow margins, we don't prune hedges every year, we're planting wildflower banks and keep as much brush, bramble thickets, dead trees and vegetation as possible. We mow every alternate alleyway to let flowers set seed and provide habitat. This is all a far cry from when farmers were urged to be tidy and cut and trim and spray everything in sight. What ignorance and with what sad results. We have active populations of very effective pollinators, such as leafcutter bees, some of the larger mining bees, like the tawny mining bee, and some of the most effective hoverfly pollinators. We have not suffered greatly from frosts. We are fortunate to have sloping land and the frost largely flows away. Rain and warmth have come and we are set for a slightly early season, but then all these things can change overnight. The weather, the pollinators, the condition of the trees are all important, but above all it is our team that brings the orchards literally to fruition with great quality fruit which keeps us an economic thriving fruit farm. Come harvest time we welcome our summer family of workers from Cipollari in Bulgaria. As part of the EU they have been able to come here, earn well and go back home to their families and their winter work. This seasonal influx should not be confused with immigration. We need a revival of the seasonal agricultural worker scheme if crops are going to be picked. The supply chain for all fresh products has become more demanding as supermarkets compete to offer a wide choice of fruits. We are driven by daily orders, the weather and the precise specification for the fruit, size, ripeness, shape, colour, skin finish, Harvest requires crucial timing and that may mean an early start if the fruit is ready and the day hot as well as long hours. Mira, Crassy and Eva and some others are our experienced summer team for thinning and harvesting. The cherries have been harvested and amazingly the first Herman plums were harvested on July the 4th and we had the honour of delivering the first English plums to Waitrose this season. The opal plums are ripening and those smaller than usual because of the drought, their flavour is more intense and I have already eaten too many. The rest of the team arrives soon and then harvest is truly underway. It has been a good year but autumn has come early. The chill was in the morning air by August the 8th and this hastened all fruit into ripeness. Clive and the teams worked long hard hours to get the plums in and now the apples are following fast and earlier than usual. The pack house worked hard to pack and dispatch 147 tonnes of plums. The trees were picked several times to ensure that the plums were ripe enough but with enough shelf life to last in store. The whole process is costly but satisfying. So now to the apple and pear harvest. First apples were Delbar, next Smitten and Elstar. Conference pears are safely in, a good crop but with lots of pears of the wrong shape. We are given very precise specifications for pears which sadly reflects the unwillingness of customers to eat all pear shapes. 
Packaging helps by including pears of varying size, all tasty, but some definitely more shapely than others. These pears are destined for juice. Ours win awards, so a good use. Nevertheless, we all need to work for less waste fruit and food. The choice of fruit all year round now is huge. Of course, there is still a demand for apples and pears, and our challenge is to win with new varieties and to steal back sales of imported fruit, which have tempted the supermarket buyers with bigger profit margins. We have some great tasty new apple varieties like Wellant and some interesting ones like Papples. We are at a disadvantage compared to European growers in many ways. They have better light levels, which increases yield and colours the fruit better. We pay UK living wage rates, but can't pass the increase on to our consumers. Labour costs are 55% of our growing costs. So, harvest is over. Our summer family of pickers are mostly homeward bound after a very busy and lucrative time here. They go home hoping for good snow for the coming ski season. They were a good crew and we hope we will see most of them next year. We are still waiting to hear what the procedure for bringing in harvest labour will be next season. All growers here totally rely on this skilled, hard-working labour. We need to recognise their value and contribution or risk losing our capacity to supply and process at least some of our own fresh produce. Without them, we will be forced to import more fruit and the economy of our rural agricultural areas will suffer. The last Jazz and Brayburn were brought in on Friday. The big topic at this time of the harvest is why so many apples are left on the trees. The main reason is lack of colour, or too small, or too large. Why does this matter? Well, in spite of what we all say about not minding, we all choose the colourful apple and we are particular about size. The Bristol Gleaners came last week to take away a couple of tonnes of this fruit to distribute to food banks and through fair shares. We are but caretakers and our aim is to be sustainable commercially and environmentally, so we are particularly proud to have our efforts recognised by the Farming and Wildlife Advisory Group. We won the Gloucestershire Silver Pintel Award in recognition of our commitment to sustainable agricultural practices and wildlife protection. We now go on to the regional Barn Owl Award and we are galvanised to put into action some more practices which will benefit biodiversity here in our orchards. We'd like to think that the great British public cares about preserving orchards as part of our wonderful diverse landscape and about supporting UK fruit growers. Amazing that our unpaid army of birds and pollinators, together with soil, sun and rain, plus some hard labour from all of us, produce this wonderful crop. So enjoy the harvest. We are particularly enjoying sliced commies pears with Stilton Bassett blue cheese. I use apples everywhere, in salads, in with the sausages, chopped on porridge and cereals, or stuffed and baked and popped in the microwave, served with custard or cream or both.